Good day to you. Welcome to my shop. Very seldom you ever see me down here with the camera because, I don't know, it's very messy and very crowded. And I'm a lot uh, happier in more open spaces. I need to uh, really need to give this baby a big overhaul. I've been thinking about that real hard. I thought I'd show you something today you very seldom ever see. This is probably the first electronics book I ever got a hold of. Um, just to kind of cut to the chase, uh, one of the neighborhood kids, when I moved, we moved when I was about, I don't know, I don't know when I, what, I'm trying to think when I moved. Oh, I don't know, six or seven. I moved to the new neighborhood that I lived at most of my life when I was younger until um, I moved out of the house. Uh, one of the neighborhood kids there had a crystal radio and he, he showed it to me. And I was pretty much amazed that you could have a radio that didn't have a battery. I couldn't for the life of me figure out how that worked. And I pestered my dad quite a bit. And I think he kind of got tired of the onslaught of questions so we went to the at the time was a pretty new public library I didn't realize that till actually about six months ago and uh, so uh, he drug me over there and we got out the old card catalog and I drug home this is a book by a gentleman called Alfred Morgan. He wrote mm, three or four books, I believe a couple more. And uh, this actually, this book is quite special. This is the book that I used to check out from the public library. And how I came about it is um, he had, at the time, he had three books. There's the first book. Uh, boy's first book of radio and electronics. There's a second book and a third book, aptly named. And I used to check these things out, and uh, basically, <laughs> in this never-ending series of rotations, and it was you know this book, that book, then the third book, then this book, that book, and pretty much around and around and around and around. And I think you could have. I was trying to think how long you could have a book out. I think it was 30 days. And this went on for quite some time. And as I got older, from time to time, I would go to the public library. And uh, I would still check the books out. They were fun to read. I don't know why. It, just, it was like an old friend. It was fun to, fun to revisit. And I think I was... I want to say, I think I was like in junior high or high school. And at that time... Um, Probably books like this were falling out of favor pretty quick. And this book was copyrighted. Well, the first printing was in 1954, and then this is the 13th printing in 1966. So I was probably in. Uh, I was probably in junior high in the kind of mid 70s. Anyway. I got a call from the public library, and which was kind of weird because we didn't have an answering machine at the time, so they must have called a couple dozen times. And they asked to speak to me specifically. My mom was kind of giving me the eye, like, "What did you do now? What did you do to the Omaha Public Library?" I, thought, I don't know. I haven't, I hadn't been in quite a while. And basically, it was one of their librarians, and they were going to have a, uh, they were cleaning out all their old books. And according to their records, I had checked these books out like a gazillion times, <laughs> which is probably true. So they wanted to know if I wanted to purchase them, and I think they were like a dollar. So I managed to uh, get over there. I think I actually rode across town on my bike, and I bought uh, the. There's a set of th three of these that they had at the time. And uh, I, I paid a dollar actually for all three of them. I thought they were a dollar a piece, so I had three, three bucks and some change in my pocket. So I thought that was a pretty cool deal. So I couldn't wait to get home with these old friends. Anyway, 
to back up a little bit, um, my dad took me to the uh, public library and basically we got this book and brought it home and he set me down to kind of start reading a little bit. And I came across basically what I was looking for. Back then all the public libraries had all the knowledge in the world and you, did, you couldn't find anything without the public library. Which I thought was pretty amazing at the time. And I'd stumbled on this radio, which was the crystal radio. And there it is, right there. Which consisted of a, a coil and a detector, or just a basic diode, and a capacitor and a few little clips. Well, I said about bothering my dad about building this, and he helped me with the wood part. Actually, he helped me with the he helped me with the metal part. He was a machinist. He worked for uh, Western Electric at the time. He worked for Western Electric his entire life, and he helped me with the the metal parts of this, the metal bracketing, and he helped me with actually, yeah, he helped me with these three pieces. And the wood I scrounged up somewhere. I think uh, at the time they were building a few houses in our neighborhood. And I think some of the local uh, construction guys helped me. That's just a, a two by two on a block of pine. And actually, they what they did was they gave me a piece of plywood. And I cut that out. There's kind of a pictorial of it. And there's the basic circuit. It's actually probably in the scheme of things probably the worst crystal radio you could build short of maybe the Foxhole receiver. But it did introduce me to electronics and it was one of my first successful projects. And as the first project it hasn't gone very far. And here it is. Actually, there's two pieces. Uh, later on in the book, there's how to build. It was either a what they call a wave trap or a loading coil. And here you can see the snazzy little aluminum angle that my father cut. And he may cut these strips for me. And uh, the rest I kind of did myself. I got wire from Radio Shack. We had a Radio Shack. And I built this. This is the actual receiver. I built this first. A friend of my dad's had some old radio junk, and he had these little fox tongue clips. And we drove to a uh, we drove 50 miles to a neighboring um, city to the south of us. And this place was kind of a surplus place, and they had a lot of electronic probably I assume uh, from the I uh, passed the Second World War I don't know they had a lot of surplus junk anyway uh, we scrounged around in there and managed to find a diode and a capacitor that's like uh, point 004 microfarad. I was just bound and determined that I was going to find the right capacitor too because I had it in my mind not knowing, you know how you are when you're a kid. You know, you think you know everything. And if you look really carefully you can see that branded on there 004. And that diode's just a basic diode. I think I paid a dollar for that. I think I wiped out my life savings buying all this stuff. And I also got headphones down there, which was a pretty good score because um, these are actually some pretty decent little headphones. These are trim headphones, and they're cloth-covered wiring, and they have a great uh, they have a great adapter on, it, which uh, has a uh, has a quarter-inch adapter. You put the little pin adapters into. So I was digging around today and I thought, you know what, I ought to fire that baby up. It, 
I had fond memories of it when I was a kid. Later, um, I think when I built this, I built, I cut the wood, thinking ahead, which was pretty scary. I cut the wood, there's three wood pieces. There's a base and this piece for the coil, and then there's a little stand up. And apparently, my dad must have, uh, I must have convinced him to think ahead too, and he made a duplicate of this. And uh, then later on, I got a hold of this. There's a little tuning capacitor here, and made this. I think I bought that from. I think I got that from Allied. I think I actually sent away for it. It was probably a buck or two, and I probably the rest of my life savings. Anyway, I thought we'd fire this baby up and see if it works. So we need a ground wire, good old water pipe, which in my shop is right next to it. Oh, we're gonna cheat. Use a little amplifier. And we need an antenna lead, which we're going to cheat and use one of my outside arrows. That was the other thing I had to hunt down, too. I um, actually spent money and uh, actually spent quite a bit of money to get this going. I bought a kit from Radio Shack. It was uh, an aerial kit. It was a piece of copper wire, two insulators. There was a flat strip with some clips on it and a ground wire to make a kind of a it was probably intended for short wave I think it was I literally think it was three dollars it was probably two ninety nine and I managed to somehow squeeze it into my squeeze the wiring into my bedroom though the antenna was on the side of the house and the wiring kind of wrapped around to the other side of the house get it to the wiring was on this side and then my window was on this side so it went around there and had that ground wire and I was set. I was in hog heaven. That was uh, the beginning of the end. My uh, my bedroom suddenly turned into Frankenstein's laboratory. <laughs> and it never slowed down. This thing is so broad band that it's not even possible. At the home agency, we offer standalone pivot policies for your pivot. It's so broad band that it's not even funny, but it do, it does receive about three or four stations here in town. And uh, amazingly enough, it took off and ran. The wiring is actually old uh, uh, Bell telephone wiring. Apparently it looks like gray and white was uh, something that I got a hold of. I'm not sure where that came from. And I slapped that baby together and it's never, never looked back. That was the beginning of the end. I'm trying to remember what uh, other... I'll have to dig around. I've got a couple other projects on boards. This was one of the like one of the first and probably the last ones that my father ever helped me with. After that, I was on my own. I After we got past this, I kind of left him in the dust. Electronics wasn't his forte. That became my job. And uh, So all my projects after that were probably, actually to be really honest, probably more crude looking because I didn't have someone to help me as much, but that's okay. You got to uh, jump off somewhere and swim around in the water a little bit. So there you go. There's the Alfred Morgan crystal set in all its glory. And the uh, this is technically the wave trap. The loading coil doesn't have the uh, variable condenser. I was just bound and determined to have something to tune. You know, how young people are. <laughs> they got to have something cool to hip to play with. And uh, it's got the little silver, or I don't know if it's silver mic, I guess it's just a mica cap. That's actually a Cornell Dubler cap. I remember that place, uh, 
that surplus place have them just just boxes and boxes and bins and bins of stuff just piled in there. It must have been equipment that they had stripped out and just thrown into boxes. And you could get a handful of stuff for uh, not very much. I think that place is still down there. I don't know if they sell too much. I don't think they sell hardly any electric electronic stuff anymore. They got mechanical stuff. They probably still got that same crap from when I was down there 50 years ago. But there you go. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I appreciate it. We have other things besides 10,000 year old projects I made as a kid. <laughs> anyway, take her easy. Have a great evening.